Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, Episode 82. In this year-end podcast, amidst a week of great cerebralations, Jen discusses Captain Crunch Theory and muses on how to vilify life in 2014. More eggnog, please. to the Communication Diva podcast. I'm Jen Swanson, and if this is your first time listening, I'm really glad that you're here. If this is not your first time listening, thank you for coming back to spend some time with me. I appreciate it very much. If you've been wondering what happened that I haven't put out a podcast for a while, it's really just been an overwhelming few months. I had an enormous project to complete and present for the university degree I'm working on, which went very well, I must say. And then, um, and then I was finishing up with my students at the college that I teach at. And then, of course, in my other job, I'm a United Church ministry student doing a solo internship in a small congregation and... Uh, as you might imagine, Christmas is a super busy time with a lot of extra services to prepare for and lead and uh, and all of that. We uh, had a blue Christmas service for people that have a really hard time being merry at Christmas. And I had two Christmas Eve services to prepare for. And it was just a, a really, really busy time with everything else that goes on. Um, and then, of course, with family, um, all four of our kids uh, perform in different uh, in different realms. So we have uh, um, uh, an eldest one who was in a Christmas pantomime um, at one of the downtown theaters. We have the second one who was in um, a uh, musical theater um, university training program and had a bunch of performances. Um, that we went to, and then the younger two had piano recitals, ballet recitals, and uh, school concerts. So, you know, we're, as I've said to many people, uh, Scott and I are um, expert audience members and have been (laughs) uh, sitting in many a theater seat for the past uh, couple of months. So um, it has not been a restful time, and something had to give, and um, what what did end up happening was uh, not a lot of podcasting. So if you are back listening, I am very grateful that you are here. And uh, I, am, I am not able to guarantee that it will be a weekly podcast for the next few months until I am finished. Um, but the end is in sight, and I'm, uh, I'm really glad about that. I'm also glad that right now we have a few down days. And aside from dinner with friends and a few social events, there's a little bit of rest time as well. Um, and so, uh, so I'm happy about that. There's been a little bit of sleeping in time, which I'm, uh, I'm grateful for. I've got one last semester to get through as far as the schooling goes. And then a very long time in coming goal will have been met. And, you know, it feels good to be almost done something that about seven years ago was just a dream. Um, going to university and completing a master's degree is not an easy thing when you're raising a family and you're working full-time between two different jobs. So going to school very, very part-time for a very, very long time is not easy. It's really easy to get discouraged and to think the light at the end of this tunnel is so far away I can't even see its glow. And, you know, this is going to take me until I retire to (laughs) to finish. But, um, you know, it's the slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. And keeping, um, keeping up with doing something all the time towards reaching that goal has brought me now to sort of the cusp of being finished. I've got about four months left, nine more credits to slog through. And, um, and, you know, it's been a long, slow road of a lot of late nights of studying and writing papers, but it really feels good um, to be coming into the final piece of this and to see that I will actually have completed something and accomplished something pretty big, I would think. 
you know, if you've been working on something for a long time, I'd love to hear about it. I'd, I'd love to get an email or a note on Facebook or through SpeakPipe. Tell me what it is, um, what the big goal is that you've um, been working on or that you have completed. Or, or tell me how far along you are towards meeting it if you're still on that road. I'd love to hear about that. The nice thing about seeing uh, April, uh, the end of April looming, is that I will have more time to devote to Communication Diva after that. In the meantime, as I said, I really appreciate you listening and to the emails and notes of support I've been getting. That's that's lovely. So uh, so I'm powering on through and um, and hope that it won't be weeks and weeks in between podcasts. I hope to be a little bit... Uh, um, more able to bring you more content. I've got interesting people that I've been talking to over the past uh, couple of months lined up to speak with you. And, um, and so I'm looking forward to, to doing that and bringing you some really interesting people in the, in the coming months. So, so stay tuned, please bear with me. And again, I will be, uh, I will be much more prolific and back to my normal once a week uh, podcasting um, come the spring. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the pinch crunch theory and you've probably heard of this before it was developed back in the 1970s by a couple of people named Jack Sherwood and John Glidewell and there have since been many iterations of it many different explanations that you can find if you just google pinch crunch theory and what I wanted to do is explain my understanding of this model to you um, to tell you a bit of an embarrassing story about pinch crunch and then talk about my desire to simplify life in 2014 and this last thing is pretty much still a desire I have no idea at the moment if it's possible or not but I would love to try and um, and so I want to talk about those things so let's start with the pinch crunch model and go from there now in every relationship whether it be a friendship a romantic relationship a work relationship or a, or a family one, there are moments when one person steps on the feelings of the other and that other person feels what the model calls a pinch. And so my understanding of it is that it's not a major offense or a deep wound or anything, but it's more of an irritation or an annoyance or just something that bugs you that, that somebody said or something, something that someone did. Now the problem with ignoring a pinch which can either be a decision that's made um, to just not get into something, which could be conflict avoidance, um, or something that isn't, it might be something that you don't consider big enough to address. The problem with ignoring a pinch is that it doesn't usually actually go away. If not addressed, it does what I call fester, which doesn't work with the metaphor of pinch crunch very well, but it doesn't really go away. So the pinch stays. The hurt is still there. It might be very small, but it still happens to be there. And then maybe a few weeks or a few months later, another pinch happens. So the two little pinches get added added together and now it's bigger. And there's a little bit more irritation, a little bit more annoyance, a little bit more pain, depending on the pinch. And if these pinches don't ever get addressed, and if more pinches get added here and there, eventually you end up with what the model calls a crunch, which is a much, much bigger problem. Now, a crunch might just be a list of all the little pinches that have added up to a big crunch in the relationship. Or they could be a major rift, a major conflict. The festering has stirred up all sorts of negative emotions and deeper emotions. And now instead of a little problem or disagreement, there is a big, ugly one. Now you might be familiar with this. You might be familiar with the idea of uh, remembering some injustice that someone has done to you and feeling all of the emotions again. Um, and that's, that's pretty common. If the pinch had been addressed right at the moment, then you would be able to let it go and, and forget about it. Um, the idea behind the pinch crunch model is to address each pinch as it comes along. And that way they won't add up and turn into a crunch. So if something is bothering you, if someone does something or says something that pinches, the idea is to find an appropriate moment 
hopefully in private and fairly soon after the pinch happens, um, and to tell the other person how you're feeling. Remember to use I language. And if you are not familiar with what I language is, you can um, you can search back in the communication site for um, the episode that I did on I language. I don't remember off the top of my head what number it was. I think this is episode 82, so it's somewhere back there. Um, but remember to use I language when you're telling the other person how you feel. So for example, uh, it might be something like, I felt hurt by what you said earlier about my hair color, and I just wanted to let you know that I didn't appreciate that comment. Um, so you were telling them about how you felt. It's pretty hard for somebody to argue about your feelings. Um, you know, I feel blah, 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 and the other person says, no, you don't, is a ridiculous argument. So, um, so using your I language and telling them about how you felt uh, after what they said is letting the other person know how their behavior affected you, no matter what their response is. Um, sometimes just letting them know will allow you to let go of the pinch and move on. It's really up to the other person what they do with that, um, with that comment that you make. Um, it, it really isn't up to you um, to manage their response. But if you are at least able to say, you know, that hurt, and, and I didn't appreciate that, then as long as you are heard, you might be able to let go of that pinch and move on. And the idea with the pinch crunch theory is that when you don't address these things, then you fester. And every time you think about that comment about your hair or whatever, the emotions associated with that experience will well up again. And you know, the body doesn't distinguish um, between um, what the emotions that happened at the time or the emotions that happen when you remember them. The body can't tell the difference. So it's as though it's happening all over again. And sometimes this festering and this running through of negative emotions can actually have a physical effect on your body. And I really believe that you can make yourself sick by rehashing old tracks and old loops of past injustices over and over again. So enough pinches and crunches and you can actually have a crisis on your hands. So the pinch crunch theory idea is a healthy one um, and, and addressing issues as they arise will allow you to let them go and not to fester and not to um, keep up this unhealthy emotional uh, replaying of scenes over and over again in, in your mind. So that is my understanding of this theory. And again, there are other people out there, if you Google pinch crunch theory, who might be able to explain it better. And I know there are a number of uh, visual models, if you'd like to, um, to look at those um, out there that, uh, that can show the cycle. But, um, but I just think of it as, as little pinches adding up to a big crunch and the festering emotionally that goes on in between that. Now, here's my uh, kind of embarrassing story. Um, and I've changed the name of the person involved. And the point of me telling you the story is not really to talk about her per se, but to talk about how I did not deal with the pinches as they came along and that it resulted in a bit of a disaster. So I'm going to um, call my friend Annette, and I'm going to say that Annette had uh, four children at the time of the story. She has more now. Um, but I'm going to say that she lived about a six-hour drive away from where I did in a small town in the country, and she would come down to the coast every few months to load up on groceries at the big box stores and to visit a lot of her friends and to see some of her family. And most of these times, she would stay with me. I had young children at the time, so my home was, you know, set up for kids. Um, we had a uh, big brand new house with a spare bedroom. We had some extra couch space. And, uh, and the kids all got along and they had a good time um, seeing each other. 
But what I started to notice um, with these visits, and, and again, I was working full time and my husband was working full time, so we, we were busy. Um, but what I started to notice was that um, the visiting time that this my friend Annette would slot for me was sort of the last slot available. And so instead of, you know, being around for dinner or being around early in the evening, I would get to visit her at 9.30 at night, you know, when I was tired and right before I went to bed. And of course, she was fun to talk to and interesting, and we would talk a lot. And so I was finding myself increasingly tired um, after these visits, notwithstanding the uh, extra number of children in our home, right? Having two children, it's, you know, suddenly there's six in the house and it's a little crazy. Um, the other thing, so, so that was a bit of a pinch. Another thing was um, the not really cleaning up after um, themselves as far as dishes and things went. Sometimes it was busy and she was rushing off to do things and I would come home after work and there would be the coffee maker still on and the or, or still full and the you know dishes everywhere and and that was a pinch and and f- unfortunately I wasn't assertive enough to actually say something which was dumb of me I should have actually uh well and maybe it wasn't dumb maybe it was just I wanted to be a good friend I wanted to be a good host and I wanted to be you know hospitable and I didn't get to see this person very often and so I didn't say anything but it really was bugging me that I was working hard all day providing a place for the this family to stay and um, and then I would come home to a bit of a disaster every day there were other things that went along um, that happened you know and I mean children do things that children do and uh And some of the things that happened um, were things that that I found upsetting that were, um, you know, um, the scratching of an antique dresser with a pin, you know, from from uh, a child who was, I thought, old enough to know not to do such things. Um, You know, there was all of these sorts of things that were very upsetting. And, you know, I just said, oh, that's okay, you know, no worries, and that kind of thing, which... um, which was not dealing with it at all. Um, the discipline um, was different in the two families, um, and uh, and the methods of discipline were very different um, on both sides. And um, some of what I experienced in my own home with this friend and her children was very upsetting to me. Um, and, uh, and so that was bothering me. And so a long story short, what ended up happening after several months was, um, I let all these pinches build up and build up and build up. And then one day, I can't even remember what the, the incident was, but one day something happened that I just could not be quiet about anymore. And unfortunately, I sat down on the couch with this friend in my own home and started listing all of the things I was mad about that had happened, uh, you know, in the past year, probably. Wrong thing to do. And uh, and so basically, it was a bit of a verbal diarrhea, you know, uh, throwing up all over, uh, all over her with all of the things that had been bugging me that were festering. And it came out with a lot of anger, a lot of resentment. And it was pretty devastating. And thinking about it, I was pretty embarrassed about it afterwards because it ended up really damaging that friendship. And that friendship was actually never the same after that. Um, you know, and, and despite all of these things that I felt justified in being upset about, my way of handling it was what was wrong. So had I said each time there was a pinch You know, I would prefer if you would make, you know, you're welcome to stay here, but clean up after yourselves, you know, that kind of thing. If I'd been more assertive, then, um, then I wouldn't have festered at all. And I wouldn't likely have had this big blow up, uh, in the end, which, uh, like I said, damaged the relationship and, um, and, and really damaged it. So I, I did not handle that very well. And so um, learning about the pinch crunch theory was really helpful to become more assertive and to be able to say when things 
bug you, what they are, and to be able to say them in a way that is assertive and gentle, but at the same time is firm and is truthful. And that can be really hard because we want other people to like us. And a lot of us find it hard to say, hey, what you did bugged me or what you did was not okay. Um, and, and that can be a real challenge for people. So there's my embarrassing story. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I do regret that handling of that. And it was a huge learning for me as far as letting things fester. The other thing too about letting things fester, and I've just, I've said it earlier already, um, is about the unhealthy aspect of it, of um, not just for your physical self, but also for the relationship, because then you're muttering about this person, blah, 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 you know. And I'm sure some of you have, you know, been at family gatherings and family dinners and have heard people mutter about, you know, oh, in 1972, you know, aunt so-and-so said this to me and I'll never forgive her for that. You know, you've probably heard these stories in your own family before. And that is a classic example of festering because that person didn't deal with whatever the injustice was at the time. They're going to rehash it for the next 25, 30 years, which is really ridiculous because the person who did whatever the thing was that they did back then probably has no recollection of this, right? So pinch crunch, something to think about, something important, I think, and uh, something maybe to try to work on in the, in the coming year. All right, so that was my story. And uh, I've already told you a little bit about how crazy life was um, for me in the past few months. But really looking back on 2013, it really was busy all around. Um, we did a lot of Um, We were blessed to do a lot of traveling in the early part of of the year, trips that had been planned for many years, some of them, and um, and family time and and, uh, and some some good exploration. Um, And then it was uh, a real push with school for me and uh, with work. And, um, And it just became pretty much unsustainable towards the end. And so my desire for 2014 is to simplify things. And I'm not entirely sure how that's going to happen yet. Because again, the first four or five months are going to be crazy with school. But I'm just trying to think of ways uh, to say no to things that are unnecessary. Ways to uh, build in some quality time with, um, with my husband and with kids and with friends and family, um, and and maybe to cut down on some of the unnecessary running about. And I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but but that's one of um, the things I would like to try to do for 2014. Another thing I'd like to do is to declutter, and I might even do a podcast episode on decluttering, um, because. Always in January, I get the urge to do that. I get the urge to take down the tree, put away all of the decor from Christmas, to clean everything up, to get rid of stuff that we don't need anymore. And I'm just feeling that right now really strongly to go through papers and get rid of them. So I think decluttering is going to be um, something that is important you know why do we need six cookie tins if we've never made cookies in the past you know (laughs) while or haven't given cookies away that kind of thing so I just think it's time to start going through drawers and cupboards and and doing a little bit of that and um, yeah and really looking at what is important and what isn't and trying to cut back so we'll see how successful uh, we are in that Um, but that is my hope for uh, for 2014. So that is all I have to talk to you about today. I wish you many blessings for 2014. I hope that you set some big goals and that you take some steps towards reaching them. Um, write them down. Um, make them real. Put them somewhere. Tell them to someone else. And then um, maybe step out of your comfort zone a little bit to try something new. I have some big goals for 2014. I'm not going to articulate them right now because I haven't done this the step of writing them all down. 
um, but I, I have a lot of projects. Um, I have some, uh, some products that I'm going to be creating um, and some things that I'm hoping to have some time to do once I'm finished uh, the biggest goal, which is finishing school. Um, but I hope for you that you're able to do the same thing. Set some big goals, take some steps towards reaching them. Um, and I hope that you find success in work and in your relationships. I hope that you deepen your connections with those you love and care about through active listening and through loving communication. I hope that you come back and, uh, and join me again. And I wish you much peace for 2014. Thank you so much. This is Jen Swanson. And until next time, um, blessings. Blessings.